Hello everybody, Bradley here, and welcome back into Old World. I normally don't do this, sitting down for a double recording session, just because it fries my brain, and I find like recording one video, editing it, packaging it up, getting it ready for YouTube, and then going on to the next one to be better for the old mentals up here. But I had so much fun. I had so much fun in that first hour of Old World that I literally went and bought some beer so I could sit back, like relax and record a few episodes over a beer or two this evening because it was just incredible. So let's just keep going on with our Rome gameplay here in Old World. Again, big thank you to Mohawk Games for this opportunity. I hope you guys are enjoying this little series. It's a little bit different than Civ, but honestly, so much fun. And let's let's ha let's start a party. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's wake up. So now that we have the general on this warrior, we are doing a lot better against some of these barbarian units. So let's go for an attack here and see what happens. There we go. We stunned him. Oh, we, yeah, we destroyed him. There we are. Get out of, get out of our face. What are you doing? I'm just going to mess around and add a specialist here. I'm not exactly sure whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Part of what's new or what's fun about playing a new game like this is you just have no idea. So let's add a specialist there and see if we can grow this city a little quickly. You've built your first hamlet. A hamlet and its upgrades village and town, if brought into your trade network, will produce extra money. Bringing a city into your trade network will reduce discontent there. That's good. The trade network consists of all tiles connected to your capital city. Cities and hamlets can be connected with one another over roads, rivers, and even open water if they are on the coast. A city which is not on the coast requires a connected harbor to reach other cities over open water. You can connect the city to its harbor with a road. You can check the trade network overlay with the whatever button below the minimap or the V key and verify that a city is connected by checking that the uh, connection icon is displayed under the city banner. Cool. Let's check that out. Right, so this city is not connected to the capital. This one is obviously not either. Cool, okay, so now we need to build roads between hamlets to make these work. All right, let's make our first unit kill here. Be gone, barbarian. Oh no, oh, super dead. Oh, we don't even move on to the tile. Sweet, so after that, can we move now? No, so once you attack, you can't move, interesting. All right, good stuff. I think we want a builder over here. We want some workers to start in a lot of different cities. We're building one over here. Can you, now here's the question. Can you buy things? We have all this money, 1,000. I guess we're getting minus 6.7 because of maintenance each turn. But can I use that to buy stuff? So at some point you are able to hurry things along for money. It costs money and happiness. So that's cool. As long as we know that at some point that is possible. I'm going to bring this uh, worker down here just to just to have some fun in Scalabus and see what we can do. Yeah, sorry, Persia. I know you're kind of mad at us already, but I'm going to make you a little more mad because I really don't want to go with war with Greece right now. Palace servants often find Queen Consort Atia walking among the gardens, openly pondering questions of life, mortality, and desire. One day she asks if she may take lessons with one of the court philosophers. How shall we accommodate? Hire a master philosopher. Gives our queen some bonuses here. That's fine. Minus 240. We have lots of gold. It's too expensive. No, no, no. Hire a master philosopher. That's totally fine. How old is the queen? How old is the queen? Queen consort Atia. How old are you? Does it tell us? She's 28 years old and we are 35 years old. So we're still pretty young. We're still pretty young and hip and with it. All right, we got the double attack on, two swordsmen, one, one done up by the general here. So this is going to be fine. Let's attack here. There we go. And now can we finish him off here? Hell yeah. Promote King Romulus the Settler. Upgrade Swift. Fatigue limit plus one, general plus one. Plus 20 opinion of Swift characters. Tracker vision plus two. Oh, I like the vision. I think the vision is better. Upgrade plus one wisdom. Oh, I mean, the critical chance is quite nice. Let's go for the tracker. We have to find more city sites, so let's go with that. And I guess next turn we can finish off the barbarians. So I have to research one of these ones in my options here. Oh, man. I think going for trapping might be the smart way to go here, just to kind of finish up the early... Oh, man. I really want the... What's it called? The ambassadors. 
that's what I really want here. If we take a look at the tech tree, what I'm hoping to go for is the aristocracy right here. It's in the draw pile. Okay. So it's a little bit random, it seems. We're going to build a hamlet right down here so we can connect these, so we can connect things to the capital, right? Here we are. It is time to kill the skirmisher. Plus one legitimacy. There we go. Now it's a city-state for us. I don't know what that means, but that's cool. We need to find a fourth city so we can meet our, what's it called, ambition. We need to find a fourth city so we can meet our ambition. So let's make sure we're doing that. Our scouts have encountered travelers from a foreign land. Although they speak a strange tongue, these men and women appear harmless. They wish to greet our people and establish relations. This one gives us plus three orders, which is very, very important. And while I like the extra culture down here, I think the more orders, the better. So let's do that. Oligarch Cornelia of Scalabus pops by your balcony as you eat your morning breakfast. With a nervous flutter in her hand, she lands in the chair across from you. I've got a rather serious problem, and you're the only one who can save me. She pops a few slices of peeled citrus into her mouth and chews with a worried look. See, I took a bet with Queen Consort Atia. God, my wife, just always making bets. Gambling addict she is. That my mare was faster than her monstrosity, but my rider has come down with the pox, and I was wondering if you knew anyone. Oh, dearie me, I nearly forgot. She grabs another fruit. I wasn't able to a convince Adia either. Made things rather worse, I'm afraid. Oh, geez. Okay, well... How do I... How do I make this work? We can hire a skilled rider. That's... I don't want to make her mad. I don't want to spend all our money. We're only getting four per turn now. We're spending 32 per turn. Yeah, I can't. I don't know anyone. Sorry. Your cognomen has changed to the explorer. Your cognomen describes your recent accomplishments. Acquiring a cognomen is one way of increasing your legitimacy in the eyes of your people. A higher legitimacy grants you additional orders and improves your standing with your nation's families. Keeping your legitimacy high is important for controlling a large nation. Cool. Well, that's exciting. I'm going to grab another scout really quick because we have not met another city site. And if we're going to get four cities, we have to meet another city site. So that'll be my next big job here. A messenger arrives from Babylonia. Your actions have taught us to trust your good intentions. Let us build our trust further. We should agree on a mutual peace. Let's do that and give them a gift. I don't want to mess with Babylonia. That's not my jam. That's not what I want. So let's keep exploring here. Here is a city site. That's what we're looking for. So now that we have a city site, we know we can build a settler. This is fascinating. On the water, too. We haven't had a city on the water yet. That's cool. You're the first to discover this landmark. The Cassitinacy Forest. We're going to call it the hunting ground, baby. That's where kings go to hunt in the forest. So after this festival is done, we know we can build a settler right away. So we are going to do just that. Oh, Greece is settling close to us. Apollonia is down. Prince Decimus is now old enough to be tutored by courtiers. Duke Quintus is now old enough to be tutored by courtiers. Hell yeah, let's rock and roll, baby. Court diplomats have been hard at work on discussions with representatives from both Persia and Carthage, but they wish to focus their efforts. Which nation should they seek to influence Persia or Carthage? Oh, geez. Uh, Carthage, I think. Yeah, improve relations with Carthage. Persia's already mad at us, but Greece is in the way. So we'll do that instead. So we have two city sites over here. Now I'm worried about building a huge empire because I don't actually know how to keep the empire huge is going to be my next problem. So hopefully we can figure that out. Greece is now at war with Carthage. Yo, have fun. Oh, yes, we want aristocracy so bad. So it's in the role. We got aristocracy. That's where we want to go. Family games. A messenger arrives with news that Valerius family is displeased with your lack of support. They demand that the court plan and host a week of expensive athletic games in their honor. Oh, come on. Cost 240. That's fine. That's fine. We want to keep the people happy, you know? Let's make sure we are tutoring our lad here. Prince Decimus. With Servius the Minister. Let's do that. Let's make sure he's beating tutored, baby. Roma has reached a new culture. Higher tiers of culture unlock additional improvements and wonders for your cities. Each new tier will also trigger a positive event for the city. Today, a group of laborers has decided to join your workforce, granting you a new worker. Yes. Hooray. 
The minister Servius the minister has come under fire for his outspoken views on national identity. Servius the minister fears that too many resources go towards the discovery of new lands while people in, the old, in our own cities languish. He desires a new investment into the Roman nation and what it means to its citizens. Servius the minister is correct and we must turn inward. Oh man, I don't want to make him mad because he's tutoring our heir. Plus 20% opinion on epics. Okay, let's do that. Let's try and figure that out. Now we're running out of gold. Oh, geez. All right, so there's an add road option here. Or there was. Oh, it requires labor force. So we can't add a road yet. So we just, we just spent a lot of time doing a whole lot of nothing here. I'm going to build a camp. I'm not exactly sure. A little bit of growth, a little bit of food. That seems like a good idea. Use a little bit of wood. Let's rock and roll, baby. I'm going to build a shrine of Venus, a little bit of growth, a little bit of culture. I think those are both things that are going to be helpful for us. There's a lot of cool stuff here that we can build. Let's go for the shrine of Venus. I'm not really sure if it's a good idea or not, but we're going to try it, you know? I don't know if I can continue to explore here without making our dude mad. Oh, we have a city site down here too. Because our dude was just kind of mad at us for exploring, right? So I'm not sure if it's a good idea to keep exploring, but it is giving us a little bit of money. I'm going to build a council here. More orders, more money, all things we need. Let's do that. It only takes one year. Plus 10 coin per year per adjacent resource for the Shrine of Vesta. So we want to build the Shrine of Vesta like next to a camp or something like that, right? So let's move over here and let's build the Shrine of Vesta. And it doesn't tell me how many adjacent resources there are. Yeah, just plus 10 for now. Maybe you have to build the camp on here. Yeah, let's do that. Shrine of Vesta. Time passes quickly and Prince Decimus is growing up fast and eager to learn. How will you educate Decimus? Oh geez, wisdom. All right, wisdom and science. Oh, more orders. Charisma. Tactics. Commerce. Oh, I really like... Let's go for philosophy here. I think, I think a wise king with a little bit of extra science is a good king. Your minister, Servius the minister, approaches the court about a title change. He feels overlooked in the court and believes his energy and expertise can be used more productively. Overseer of the fields, plus 80 food. Plus, oh, geez. What are the hammers exactly? What do the hammers do? Oh, that's the civics, right? Used to develop specialists and finished projects. So we want civics. I knew civics going to the national stockpile, which can be used to enact laws and establish theologies. We really do want the civics right here. The food is nice. Plus two legitimacy. Legitimacy is very important. Let's go for legitimacy here, especially if we're going to be building more cities. They said that legitimacy was really important for, for bigger empires. Now I think we can just take out these barbarians, right? Yeah, we're good here. Let's take them out. There they are. They're gone. See you later. Bada bing, bada boom. That's another city site. So we have quite a few places we can build more cities here. Servius, the steward in the chamber, has tutored Prince Decimus, improving his courage. Hell yeah, brother. Let's rock and roll. Recently, preachers of Zoroastro, oh God, have turned up in Lugdunum. Rather than trying to use fear or offers of unconditional love, they're employing an incredibly reasonable argument, which is convincing many citizens to convert. Um, do we, we don't have a religion going on, do we? Let's play. They make a compelling point. Representatives from the Academy arrive at the court bearing news of Prince Decimus. He has been well and is unfortunately turning out to be as irresolute as his mother. Oh, geez. Well, I don't have a lot of options here, so it's got to be rather regrettable indeed. Oh, that sucks. Time passes quickly. Duke Quintus is growing up fast and eager to learn. Would you like to educate Quintus? Yes. Hopefully... Hopefully he turns out a little bit better than Decimus or Decimus. Yeah, let's go for the charisma and the civics. So there are quite a few city sites around. Having two scouts is really helpful. There are quite a few places for us to continue to settle cities. I think we should build a settler here, all things considered, now that we know that there's a place nearby to settle another city. Ooh, we're near the Danes. Let's harvest the sheep, get a little bit of food out of it. 
Man, this game is so fun. I'm digging this a lot. Adopt state religion. Worshippers from all over the nation arrive at court seeking direction. Is it time to adopt Zoroastrianism as our state religion? Doing so will reduce discontent in Zoroastrian cities and improve relations with families who follow Zoroastrianism. Sure. I don't have a problem with that. Duchess Twila is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate Twila? Probably commerce. Let's go for commerce, a little bit of money. All right, let's finish scouting first before I move the warriors. You only have so many orders, right? So you have to be careful about which units you're using. So I think we've hit the edge of the map, question mark? I think this black line is the edge of the map, cool. Let's harvest the cattle. This is interesting, this little city site here. Nice and close, easy to connect, so I think we'll do that. What do we need for a road again? I want to build the roads, man. Where are the roads at? So we are currently going for rhetoric. No, sorry, aristocracy, which is going to give us the ambassadors that we want. Centralization. Okay, interesting. Where are the roads? Labor force is the road, so we're going to want labor force next. We're falling really far behind, though. We suck at this game. Whatever we're doing, we're not doing well, because Carthage is killing it. Oh, no! Greece is now at war with Rome. Uh-oh. How shall we respond? Oh, it starts an ambition to kill 10 military units. Uh, recruit new mounted units. Yeah, we don't have any units nearby. Oh, that's bad. One of your scribes has returned from Nicomedia in Greece. Excitedly talking about the practices of Judaism. Like, not right now, scribe. We're at war. We're at war. Yeah, I want the plus two legitimacy and we're not J Judaism, we're the other one. As part of her, their training, Duchess Twila and her fellow students organize an emporium near Roma where they study. Twila leads the effort, shows considerable promise. In fact, the citizens of Roma wish to keep the emporium as a per permanent fixture. Um, add a market, gain caravan. Yeah, let's add the market, sure. Oh man, there's so much going on. Our spies receive a personal message addressed to you from Nishi Inshidu, ruler of Babylonia. It is a paranoid rant, a litany of accusations and falsehoods. Apparently she's convinced that you are plotting against her. What? No, why are you in charge? I had a good relationship with Babylonia. Queen Nishi oh, becomes vengeful. Oh, geez. Yeah, we have no, we have no qualm. We have no qualm. Okay, so now we have a bit of a problem. And that problem is that I'm not really sure exactly how war works in this game. So we're we're going to find out. We're gonna build a mine here. It's gonna give us plus 40 gold per year. So that's worth doing. Now, how do I, I have no units over here. We have this chariot unit. which is helpful, and that'll be at least a little defensive. What we need here is a slinger unit though, so let's build a slinger, it costs four years. Can we hurry this along? Requires holy war, state religion, developing culture, oh man. And we don't have the gold, so we can't hurry it along. We have to wait for the slinger, oh geez. Oh geez, are we screwed? Are we screwed here? We might be, we might be done diddlyunskis already. It's gonna take like actually 180 years to get our units over here. Hopefully we'll survive this. Duchess Consort Agrippina, your sister-in-law has died. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want anyone to die. So this is like a super buffed up dude. All right, I don't know if this increases the defense in the city here. Discontent level two, oh, cause Fabius is a low opinion of me. Oh, come on. We need this slinger, man. So the chariot is gonna do a good job against this warrior here, so that's good. It does seem like we are gonna survive here. We've come across a guarded entrance to an ancient ruined city. A majestic sphinx is sitting on an inscription that will help us open the gate. What's the riddle? Oh yeah, I want the riddle. I wanna find out. The, thing, the sphinx asks, I am black. I am a black child sprung from a bright sire, a wingless bird fleeting to heaven from earth. Each eye that meets me weeps, but not from grief. And in thin air, I vanish at my birth. Yeah, let's go for the critical chance there. That sounds good. Oh, this is getting spicy now. This is getting spicy. We're at war with Greece. 
I don't know if I'm happy about this. Oh, he's bringing more units. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Stop the slaughter. All right, we got aristocracy. So we have ambassadors now. I wouldn't mind archers here. I wouldn't mind forestry, though, for the lumber mills. Drama for the ODM would be nice. Let's go forestry. Um, if you build lumber mills around these guys here, whatever I'm building here, I can't remember what I'm building here, then you get extra stuff. So we're going to build some lumber mills in this area. Oh, yeah, this is very bad. Hopefully this slinger hurries up. He has more units coming, too. He has a slinger coming up. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Maybe what we should do is actually move the general over to this guy. Let's see if we can do that. How do we how do we go about that? We can also promote this dude, right? Because we have lots of the training right here. So let's add the general. We're going to add King Romulus here. Although, you know what? Like, the queen consort's not too bad either. So I can't do anything because I've attacked. So it's good to know you have to do everything before you attack. Our spies report that contacts in Babylonia and Persia may be amenable to diplomatic discussions. Improving positive relations with us, where should we activate our envoys? Babylonia, for sure. Look, Dunham is under siege. The defenses have been slow to muster, but the city leadership is organizing militias to protect key locations in the city. Where should they focus their efforts? Minus 40 unhappiness, plus 140. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Defend the innocents and those, and all those in harm's way. Let's do that. Reports of recent exploits by Prince Decimus of the Academy reach your ears. It seems a renowned philosopher is taking a liking to Decimus and has been giving him private lessons. Shall we bring this philosopher to court? Um, I would rather Prince Decimus become something cool than bringing... Becomes inspiring. Yes, good. Nobles in the court insist that we clarify our stance on administration. Do we support policies of centralization or vassalage? Um, centralization will strengthen our power. This will start our laws. Interesting. So let's go look at the laws here. Centralization or vassalage. Plus 10 civics per turn. Is that civics? Plus 10 civics rate per turn. Capital city gets extra science. Interesting. Okay. Minus 50 unit consumption. Oh, we're going to go centralization. Yes. Done. Hell yeah, brother. If you have researched aristocracy technology and you have available candidate on your court with the orator, diplomat, or commander trait, then you may appoint an ambassador using the scroll icon. Yeah, let's employ Titus the let's uh, appoint Titus the Younger. Now, where should we do that? Where is he? Where is he an ambassador? All right, so he is now an ambassador. Can I choose where? Can we go to Babylonia? How do I add an ambassador to Babylonia? I just don't want to make them mad, you know? Do I do it based on a city? Like on a city-by-city -city basis? There's Babylon. She's got four. Oh, man. She's got four population here. No wonder she's so good. I, I was under the impression you can send your ambassador out to other civilizations, so we'll figure that out later. To the court's surprise, a marriage proposal has arrived from the Danes, Prince Decimus and Sulpicia the Dane. She is. Holy smokes. Okay. Let's go here. Man, this guy's, this guy's kind of cute. Look at him. 18 years old, ready to get married. So courage and discipline. She's upset with me, but she does give courage and discipline. And he doesn't have a whole lot of courage and discipline. So maybe that's a good match. Yes, ring the bells. Cool. Now that Prince Decimus has completed his study of philosophy, how shall he contribute to the court? A wise advocate for the people can serve as governor or chancellor. Store 10 orders between years. I don't know. Oh, you can switch the law cost as well. And that takes less. Can serve as governor or chancellor. Can add the urban tiles. Multiple workers can build improvements. Oh, yes. We want to build up, man. Let's do that. Now that Duke Quintus has completed his study of rhetorics, how shall he contribute to the court? Ooh, a powerful politician. A judge, a wise advocate to the people. Um, We're rolling in cash. Let's go for an orator here. Perfect. I will use my ambassador for diplomatic missions. That's all I want. 
that's all I want to do. We have this uh, settler here. So this settler is going to go settle this city up by the holy site. I like the idea of being on the water. So we're going to head up in this direction. Now, how do I send my ambassador on missions? Trade mission? Okay, cool. So this is how, maybe? Right, so now he's an ambassador. I can send him on trade missions. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, let's go on a trade mission to Babylonia. Plus 20 experience, cost 100 civics, that's fine, and two orders, yeah. We're going to go on a trade mission. It costs three years. Interesting. We need to keep growing the people here, man. We need festivals real bad. Really bad. We need more people in these cities. So he's kind of retreating a little bit. What I do want to do is promote this guy, though. We have lots of, of uh, whatever this is called, training rates. So let's make sure we promote here. Yeah, I think we just do combat. Like, plus 5% combat is perfect. So let's do that. That's a good promotion. We can add a general now. Oh, I can't, right, because we're on a promoted cooldown. So you can only do one thing per turn. Interesting. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Prince Decimus, your son, and Princess Condor Consort Sulpicia have given birth to a son, Queso. Yo. Man, getting it on with the Danes already. Look at that. Boastful heir. The royal family of Persia visits the court. During a feast, Prince Cambyses of Persia makes a shocking boast about how much better a ruler he will be one day. King Cyrus, the intrepid of Persia, chides him for his brashness and turns to us for support. What do we say? Oh, jeez. All right. Oh, so do we... Now, here's... In, do we piss off the prince who's going to be in charge one day? I think we piss off the current king. We piss off the current king, for sure. Duchess Twilla, the academy has repeatedly censored Twilla for drunken behavior. Hell yeah, girl. I'm not even mad. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. At all times of the day, they resorted to locking her in her chambers at night, but still found her in a drunken stupor the next morning. <laughs> the other families and the principal of the academy wish to expel the student, but they require your consent. Um, no. Oh, minus 40 opinion from all families. They're already pretty mad at me. Oh, this is a bad choice. Becomes affable, uncouth, or wanton. Okay, come on. Can we just not behave? I was happy a second ago. As you say, she's a lost cause. That's not what I mean, but I guess that's it. The war with Greece continues to take its toll, but many in the court resist calls for peace. In fact, these ministers wish to intense... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to war. We're warring here. Capture three cities? That's going to be hard, but let's do that. Let's try and capture three Greek cities here. Greece is really far ahead of us, so I don't even know how we're going to do that, but we're going to try our best. One more turn for the slinger. Can we, once we have a unit, I'm assuming we can promote that unit. So if we have a slinger and then we get archery later, we can, we can promote that unit as I'm assuming how this works. We are running out of stone pretty quickly here, so we're going to need a worker to build some for us. Maybe a quarry. Interesting stuff. Let's see what he does. I reckon he runs away with this guy. I think taking the city up here is probably the best. Oh, he's running in with a new sword. Oh, that was a, that was a lot of movement. That was a lot of movement. Ilya the Orator, plus one charisma. King Romulus, I'm now severely ill. Oh, well, that sucks. Your son and Sulpicia have given another child? Oh my god. Displeasure of Mars. The doors of the throne room burst open. Rampaging warriors flow into the court, shoving past the royal guard. Steel is drawn. Guards rush to protect you. Oh god. What happened? What is the, uh... What is the offer? No fear, O king, no fear. Matriarch Aurelia of Lugdunum waves a bloody axe above her head. Mars rages with me and he must be sated. Welcome to the dedication at Lugdunum or doom shall fall upon you. I'm severely ill. Can you leave me alone? Minus four. Yeah, let's do that. I humble myself before their gods and their humble servants. Let's just make people happy. Extra culture is nice. We need it. We really need population in these cities. Very much. 
I think this city should be easy enough to take too. All right, so he's got two swords in here now. It's not ideal, but now we have a slinger as well, right? Now, where's our slinger unit? Oh, here he is. The slinger is a ranged unit with a default max range of two tiles. Ranged units can shoot farther from on top of a hill, but suffer 20% damage reduction for every tile between them and their target. Firing into trees or scrub will also reduce their damage. Let's come right here, kind of into the city. And then let's attack. Yeah, if we attack here, we can probably kill this guy. Yeah, there it is. And then this guy is super dead. Or super not. Yeah, he is super dead. There we go. Now we can turn our sights onto this warrior next turn. Oh, heck yeah. We're doing fine. We're going to do some repairs real quick, and then we'll work on a warrior after that. The competition between Quintus the Ruthless and Ambassador Titus has been growing increasingly intense over the previous weeks. Each claims that their verses of praise to Ahura Mazda are the best, and that the other, the follower of the lie, trying to lure people away from the path of Zoroastrianism. Your advisors prevent the verses and implore you to step in before it comes to blows on the street. Oh, I have to pick between Quintus the Ruthless, my nephew, and Ambassador Titus. Ambassador Titus becomes vengeful. I have to pick... Oh, man. I have to pick... Oh, jeez. Who do I want to be vengeful? The Ambassador or... I mean, this guy's got an actual job. Quintus is kind of like, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to go, no one can miss Titus. I don't know what the consequences of that are, but they might be big. They might be huge. In other news, though, I think that's the perfect spot to, to leave this episode here. In the next episode, we are going to try to take over Greece. We have to take three cities for the ambition. So that's going to be a bit of a chore. We have to build some more units. We have to get out there while also building up our empire because we are struggling at the moment uh, in score. And I'm not exactly sure why. So we're going to have to figure some things out. Uh, like always, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Like button, subscribe button, all that stuff are around. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.